Hey everybody, Wally Renee here from the Mod Institute. Hey, this is Michael DeFee, also from the Mod Institute. We are going to describe the custom healer process from start to finish, um, and hopefully you guys could glean some little tips and tricks that you could uh, implement into your practice. Yeah, really easy, you know, anyone with basic digital design skills can do this. Okay, so the first thing um, is we're gonna talk about before we get into the design of this is the manufacturing of the options that we have here. Option number one is to print direct to fixture. It's a little bit controversial. Mike doesn't like doing it that way, but I do. Uh, he's a tie base, he's titanium cold steel kind of guy, but I print direct to fixture and I love it um, for a number of reasons. One is I don't have an interface where the abutment meets the um, custom healer, another area for bacteria to collect. Um, I like it to be all solid in one piece. Mike likes the titanium interface going down into the implant because um, no concerns of retrieval issues if something should break. Yeah, the torque tends to hold a little bit better with the tie base as well, which I do like. I, I always do all my designs and all my treatment with you know one big thing in mind, which is I, I don't want the patient to ever have to call me or come back, so I do everything I can to avoid any kind of post-operative uh, issues. With that said, I've had some screw loosening for the printed uh, direct-to-fixture, but not enough to have anything um, come off. Uh, I notice that the, you know, post-op follow-ups that sometimes I tighten the screw just a little bit, uh, maybe a quarter turn or half turn. Okay, so here we have a printed um, custom healer on a true abutment 5.5 millimeter tall uh, titanium tie base. Now, this tie base has an anti-rotation notch in it, which is designed to allow the abutment piece to, to seat to the crown in one specific orientation. Notice in this case, we have a piece sticking out um, occlusal to the actual slice plane of the custom healer. Not a big deal. We could go ahead and um, grind that off later, or we could have picked a smaller, tall, uh, less tall abutment. But so the, the steps to bond Flexera in this case to the titanium abutment is to sandblast it first with 30 micron aluminum oxide particles. Make sure you have everything roughened. Um, don't want to skip this step. It's important to add some micro mechanical, uh, macro mechanical retention, I should say, to the Flexera. Step number two is you're going to apply some adhesive to the inside. I prefer MDP containing adhesive. This is something that's going to be important for um, long-term bond durability. And then you're going to prepare the titanium. I typically put an MDP containing primer on there. Um, I use either Panavia's um, Ceramic Primer Plus or Monobond Plus from Ivoclar. And I'm going to coat the surface with the Silane um, with MDP, it also has various <laughs> different um, surface preparation properties that allow it to bond to metal. The next step is to use <laughs> um, some type of resin, but be careful because it's, uh, especially this Ivoclar's multi-unit abutment cement is very flowable. So I always put it on a micro uh, brush at first, and I use the micro brush quick tip applicator to put a very thin coat on the um, tie base. That's probably even too much there. Um, just make sure you, you wipe away the excess so that it doesn't gush everywhere. And, and inevitably it still will. And so you're gonna line up your abutment to the anti-rotation notch and you're gonna press it in. It's, um, it's super tight, so you, you're gonna wanna give it a lot of force for it to be able to uh, go down. And once it's fully seated, you're gonna hold it for three minutes, and then I like to put it in glycerin for seven minutes to, I don't clean the um, excess flash off. I do that afterwards with um, rubber wheels and points. Um, I let that fully set up completely, and the glycerin helps with the oxygen inhibited layer. And so after that seven minutes in glycerin, you are now going to polish and remove all the excess cement that you'll see, and I like to use to remove the uh, extraneous titanium that's sticking out of the occlusal, I use that Comet disc. It cuts metal the best that I've seen. It's, um, I think I feel like it's designed to cut titanium and you'll see sparks flying. <clears throat> Just be careful. It's easy to like um, accidentally- Nick your finger. Yeah, you could, you could pop yourself pretty bad. But what I do with these is I go around and kind of uh, hit it from all different angles we're super zoomed in here so you guys could see uh, everything that I'm doing and, and 
making sure that you basically are creating, you don't want to go through and through in just one swipe. You want to kind of weaken it from all circumferentially around and then it just kind of flakes off with your finger. And it, it kind of, you could use your finger just to pop it off at the end so it's not going flying or anything like that. And then after you get it off, you're just going to um, polish the top. Again, I'm using this Comet um, acrylic polishing disc. It's a soft kind of fiber uh, with polishing particles embedded into it. And I really like this because you could hit the metal with this and it doesn't scratch the metal at all. Um, and it, in fact, it, it, it's good at getting the adhesive and the glue that you used off of the metal surface. You're going to polish the whole underside of your custom healer and making sure that it is free of any kind of bumps or any kind of irregularities. And so, Mike, why don't you go into how you design this? So we did this design in um, Pimeca's Romexa software. So you're going to set up the, the guide design just like you would for any um, normally normal guided implant, place your implant, you know, follow all the parameters and guidelines that you like to when you're placing as far as uh, relativity to teeth and vital structures. Then you need to attach the uh, the scan body to the sleeve within your guide, and then you're going to export two files from that you need to export a soft tissue file which is basically the scan without the implant and the scan body attached to it and then you also need to export the file that has the scan body attached to it and so you're going to use that for um, when you design the actual custom healer over in the digital design software that you use we like um, playing cad premium um, exocad has a very similar workflow and so that gives you just like you're doing a post-placement scan, you have the placement of where your implant's gonna be, the orientation, which we timed using uh, the guide itself, uh, which the Eurus implant system has a really intuitive, easy way to do that. Um, and then you go in, you uh, just work through the work, the basically the wizard workflow within uh, PlainCAD Premium, mark your margin, um, do a digital wax up, to your implant placement and then you need to go and plain cut it once you're done and so that's kind of a sped up version of uh, us doing that here yeah you know it's really cool uh, kudos to the Romexis team for allowing you to attach and true abutment for allowing you to open up their libraries <clears throat> so that you could attach um, scan bodies pre-surgically and also for them thinking ahead of the timed guide and so this is what you basically get after you're done designing you get the the, the restoration that would fit on the tie base and you could export that and plain cut it in the slicer. Alternatively, if you're me, you're gonna export the whole thing and, and print the whole thing monolithically direct to fixture um, using the abutment library as a guide um, I think for you, that. Yeah, you show both there. It's pretty easy to choose you know, which objects you're exporting there. Um, mine, obviously, without the tie base attached and uh, Wally's uh, with it uh, attached as the file that you can print. <clears throat> Let's see if we can find the right files to load into the slicer here. Um, they're a full contour when you when you export them and so the way that you slice them is really easy in uh, desktop health's RP slicer. The first thing tip is to actually um, you want the the hole to be perfectly parallel to the build platform. So the tube would be perpendicular to the build platform and one way to do this is to use the the snap down to plate feature to, to put the orange ring, as you saw there, flat on the build platform, and then rotate to a full 180 degrees perfectly so that you know that now you are perpendicular, that the, the tie base fitting surface is perpendicular to the platform, and then you're going to use the feature there to slice it and print flat on the build platform. Same thing with the integrated um, hex, where if you wanted to print direct to fixture, Carefully try to find, let the software find that hard edge where you're not necessarily here. We're going to have to do it again. We want it to be orange all the way around circumferentially. There you go. So that's flat against the build platform. And now we're going to uh, flip it 180 degrees. And then we are going to um, use the integrated slicer feature, plane cut feature to plane cut it. And so this will print in, in nine minutes. Don't worry about the separation of uh, meshes there. That'll that'll be, it'll print fine, um, nothing to worry about. And so you have these two options, ti titanium um, tie base or direct to fixture. Yeah, I think, um, and this is, this is just the illustration of the case that we just went through. Um, 
you know, getting the guide placed, uh, trying everything in. And the surgery was, what, about 20 minutes? Yeah, tops. That's with me standing over your sho- shoulder <laughs> filming. Yeah, so <clears throat> um, the, the main thing is, um, you know, making sure that your guide fits nice and that everything's seated. Um, Uris implants have a fully guided system where it's timed and guided. Even the implant goes through the sleeve, so everything is depth controlled. Um, this, is, this shows that the intimate fit of the pylon kit to the sleeves is pretty remarkable. Um, everything is, is very precise here where you, you get very little wiggle room of, of the pylon, of the long pylon into the sleeve, and I love it. It's, it's definitely one of my favorite implant systems. So here's the implant. This is a uh, Uris regular implant, and you can see the notches on the driver. Um, and there's little slots as well. Each slot corresponds to a flat spot in the hex, which can line up to the notch on the sleeve. And it's depth controlled, so you can't uh, screw up here. And if you were worried, you could you could fine tune it with the last rotation with a driver, which we do here to line up the, the notch and get the timing right. We switch to a manual driver for the last like quarter rotation, um, just, just to kind of get it absolutely perfect, which is essential when you're doing a, a timed hexed interface here. Um, I say hex, but it's actually a, a internal conical connection um, with a with a pretty aggressive platform switch. Yeah, and <clears throat> just the ability to, to time the guided surgeries has really uh, changed the way that I practice implant dentistry, both from being able to have custom healers ready to go, immediate temporization. Uh, it's just so intuitive and, and easy, um, you know, just makes these, these surgeries so fast and so stress-free. Yeah, so here we are um, fine-tuning the rotation. Here's here's the, the money shot here where you see the black vertical line on to... Let me back that up just a second so you guys could see that. That's right about here. Okay, so that black... This is the implant driver um, that we use for the manual tool. And you can see the black vertical is right in line with the notch on the sleeve, the little metal divot right there on the sleeve. That's going to lead to a perfect timing for this particular restoration. So there's the custom healer on the tie base. Um, um, that's the custom healer delivered and, and Teflon tape and composite in the access hole. All right. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's right. All right, guys, I hope maybe you could take this and run with it. Um, do some incredible stuff. It's, it's really inspiring to see the, the really f- fantastic work everybody's doing and posting. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks guys.